in here, okay. Might be like chilling in the Cobar Motel. All right, so toolbox talk, it's Monday, and we are on the letter M C O G H I J K L. We're on the letter L. L. L is our letter of the day. Does anybody have any suggestions for L words? What is it? Um, <laughs> losing. Lazy. No. Yeah. Laziness. Learning. Losing. Holes. Lesson. Learning. Listening. I'd say listening, 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 listening. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say that we are this this I'm gonna say loss. Loss is actually kind of an important one to talk about. Um, things connected to job sites, connected to our personal lives. Language. Language. Although we've already took the app, which kind of covers language. Language kind of does, yeah. Anything else come to mind? Liability. 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 And much. Ooh, that's actually, that's legit. Something good to talk about, actually. <laughs> okay. So let's dive in to a couple of these and talk about them briefly. Um, everybody already knows about laziness. Laziness is something that I do not feel like we have an issue with here. Um, I know it's common in a lot of industries, but I don't feel like we have a problem with it. Uh, the only thing that I'd say, just as a real brief, you know, kind of like hit laziness, is something that I tell most everybody when I'm around or when I'm teaching a new guy is if you're on a job site, you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, you're kind of waiting for orders, don't put your hands in your pockets, act like you're working, <laughs> you know, like, because uh, you might come across as being lazy even though you're just trying to learn something or something else. So like, typically what we like to show the customer is that we're, we stay moving, our hands aren't just like, you know, chilling, like looking around like, you know, because you can come across as being lazy even if you're not. I don't think any of us are lazy, but it's important to stay moving, it's important to, you know, be using your hands or be like holding something. There's this like guy on TikTok right now who, uh, this going viral because he's he's in like broken English showing people how to act like they're working or <laughs> how to like how to basically like waste time on the job site. Hold a new gun. You know, it, it's like random stuff like that. So we're you're trying to teach people how to like just mess around. Anyway, that's laziness. Um, loss. As we get bigger, this is becoming kind of more of a interesting thing. Losing, loss. So when I think of loss, I think of like money. But it can be tools, it can be time, it can be a lot of different things. But most big companies, they have like a ratio that's calculated into each job, like of how much loss. So for us, for like if we're doing a roof coating, we, we factor in like 7% material loss from overspray or from the wind or the sun or things like that, okay? Uh, drive all the same way when I get out of a job, I'm expecting some to get thrown away, okay? Yeah. What we are trying to get better at with our loss ratio, we're gonna call it, loss ratio is we're trying to keep it in that one to nine percent range we're trying not to get too high so what that normally means for us is we need to be careful about how we use our scrap how we store our extra material so we can return it both me ben and joe have been 
making returns at lows almost every day, you know, now. And it's actually helping because instead of just buying one or two things, we're buying extra just so we don't have to make another trip to the store. And then we're just returning them at the end of the day or returning them the next day. Um, so it's saving us a trip or two to the store sometime once it's plumbing, because then you just screw it because you're not you know, making your pay, right? Not unless you own the store. But uh, the the loss ratio is so for each of as, as personal and company, like we're trying to cut down on how much waste we have, okay? Um, over the course of a month, say if you waste $10 a day, and then 10 times 20, and then suddenly that's a couple hundred bucks of extra material that we're having to buy to make up for it. And that couple hundred extra bucks could make an insurance payment or a car payment or something like that over time, you know. It adds up a lot quicker than you think. I mean, we've already gone over the loss ratios. It's just fancy term, but we've gone over, you know, if you lose your lunch, if you bring your lunch and then eat your lunch for breakfast, like most of us do, and then, <laughs> then you go and spend $14, you know, at lunch because you already ate your lunch, it's lost 14 bucks. I mean, it adds up really quick over the course of the week, you know. Or if or if somebody spills your energy drink, <coughs> that's three bucks is instantly just vaporized, you know, plus your energy. So there's a lot of things in the loss category that we need to be careful of. The things that are the, the red flags when it comes to loss is stuff getting wet, Stuff getting, you know, basically ruined because uh, moisture. Yeah. So moisture. So I, if you're storing tools, you're storing material outside. If you're doing stuff like that, and then rain's coming, you know, hopefully you'll be thinking like, okay, like we can't return this if it's gotten sprayed on. You know, we can't return this if it's got a whole bunch of holes in it, you know, like there's certain things that are getting ruined that's a red flag. Uh, moisture is a big one because they're only like end of the job, you throw everything in the back of your truck, you're tired. So instead of tarping it or instead of going to the shop and then unloading it, then what ends up happening is... You woke up the next morning. You woke up the next morning and everything's wet, you know, so it can happen. Uh, things to be aware of. Other things is uh, painted. It's hard to return stuff that's been painted. Uh, painted or mudded. Like it mud's a little bit more forgiving because you can't get it off most of the time. But if it's if we're if we're kind of thinking clearly as far as like okay we need to use this sheet, then I'm not just gonna like throw that sheet down to where it breaks in half when I'm in the middle of the job site. I'm gonna like stack it somewhere where yeah, these are my pieces that I'm going to use for my cuts, you know, when needed. You're thinking in a way where it's, we don't have unlimited supplies, you know, uh, in order to do those things, okay? Learning, pretty simple. We've been working on this all along. We went over this when it came to knowledge, which was, I guess, last week's. And the ways we learn things. There was three ways we learned things, if you guys remember. One is obviously YouTube. Um, the other was Call Joe. <laughs> Call Joe <laughs> was skilled person. Okay, there should be a person in your phone that if you don't know how to do something, you call them and they'll explain it to you in a way you can understand it. And then the third way is hands on. Okay, so we went over this last week. As far as when you're learning something, when you're trying to figure it out, obviously YouTube video. Next would be like, I know an actual electrician, I'm going to call him and ask him what I should do here before I do something. And then obviously you're going to have to learn as you're doing as well. But uh, learning is an important part of production. It's an important part of getting better as a company. Um, the more you know, your pay should complement that because you're getting more stuff done. So like, 
if you're becoming more self-sufficient, if you know how to do something and I don't have to worry about you like kind of having to figure it out, if you're learning something, you're not gonna be the fastest guy, frankly, because muscle memory makes money. Everybody knows like if you've done something a whole bunch, you're gonna be faster at it. If you haven't done something very much, you're not gonna be that fast at it, which means you, you know, you won't make it, you won't do as much of it, basically, okay? Listening is one that everybody needs to work on. In the L category, um, the Bible, Bible uh, says this, and it's something I've tried to live by, and hopefully it shows. It says, be quick to listen, <clears throat> slow to speak, and slow to anger. I'm not going to point any names, but there are several people in our crew, and that have been in our crew past, that are like the opposite of this, <laughs> which just means you're stupid. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being stupid, I've been stupid too. Oh, but, uh, I mean, it happens. I'm not talking about Cody, okay? Even though Cody does sometimes do it. But what, what I normally see on people who are not wise, nothing wrong with not being wise, it's part of life, everybody's got to learn stuff, is you're quick to have an opinion, you're quick to like want to say something, and then you get angry fast because either people aren't listening or something else is wrong or something like that. So normally the smart guys, they don't say as much. Okay? The smart guys will go along with something or they'll just do it without a whole bunch of uh, speaking involved. Okay? Uh, and being slow to anger is something that is an important part of just being professional. There's ways to channel the anger. There's ways to uh, be angry and not sin, as the Bible would say. There's, there's other ways to be angry and be professional about it. <clears throat> but um, when it comes to listening, um, it's not. It's there, there's a difference in in listening and waiting so you can talk. Okay, listening is actually hearing somebody out. Listening is actually trying to understand what the other person's saying, not just like waiting for them to stop talking so you can then tell them what you want to say, you know? And it's an important uh, aspect in negotiations and it's an important aspect in, you know, relationships, even dealing with customers. Sometimes my job is just to listen to them and them know that I'm listening to them versus like, not places to be, you try to like hurry up and steer the conversation, you know? Because sometimes they just want to know that I can, <coughs> I can not say anything, you know? Um, it doesn't always apply, but there's definitely times where it's important to know how to listen. Lang wow, I guess we're doing all the else, okay. So, so language, um, one of our company policies is that everybody speaks Spanish within six months. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, along with Spanish, because Spanish is the, the it's like if you guys want to be foreman, really, I mean, so like everybody here, like has a chance of, of running a crew if you can speak Spanish, <laughs> because there's Hispanic families out there that just need an English guy to be able to like help you know, coordinate what they need. Like, hey, I need you to run the store to go grab this. We'll handle everything. You just stand around and look at old white and look at everything else. Because <laughs> you know, it's like, your best bet of being a foreman is learn how to speak Spanish and then any roofing company will hire you yeah. and just give you a crew. <laughs> and they do everything. They know, they know more than you do anyway. <laughs> but um, aside from like being bilingual, which is, Right. Which is definitely a good thing to do. I don't know how you spell that. I'm pretty sure it's not that way. Um, we already know, like, for us, we're seeking to be professional. And if I'm hearing, like, the F word, if I'm hearing, you know, um, name calling or somebody being like a racial slur or certain things like that, 
then I'll, I'll you know, confront you on it or I'll, I'll bring it up. Um, being professional and what you do in your private life is, is your business. You know, I'm not going to complain about it. Um, but language is one of those things that in a professional atmosphere, at least in this current professional atmosphere, um, language is going to be one of those things to where your goal is to be as clear, uh, as clear as possible with as little misunderstanding as possible, okay? Because the goal for everybody in the professional space is to make money. Like our goal, I don't care about anything else, like our goal as a business and as people in business is to make money. So you're either helping me make money or you're wasting my time, it's one of the two. So there's always gonna be spots around the water, whatever it is, water something. Don't they have like water things in offices? I don't know. It's, it's called something where you shoot the, the fountain. Oh, you talk water about fountain, whatever it is. I don't know, but like, water yeah, water yeah water water. whatever. So it's, it's, we don't have them because we're not bad at this <laughs> But like, normally people like, oh, when they're getting their water, they're shooting the shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so like, but, but like outside of like casual, we're on break talk, most everything is supposed to be professional. Okay. So like, if you're gonna insult somebody, it better be on your break <laughs> or something along those lines. You know? Do it professionally. Yeah, do it professionally. So just be careful, because the goal of our language is, and I mean, I have to work on this with like Ben, because Ben will like start talking to me and like he'll explain all these details. I really don't want to know the details. I just like want him to get to the point, you know, and I'm just gonna hang up, you know. but. You know, there, there's times where like it's good to have a conversation, and there's times where the goal is, hey, this is what I need. Give me an answer on this, and then boom. That's what us big wig bosses and foreman need. They don't really want, hey, you know, you remember that time like while I'm shopping at Lowe's where you're talking about the football game or whatever. You know, that's all good. And, that's all fine, and we're all you know a family in a, in a sense. But our goal is use as efficiently as possible to, to make money. So don't distract us if it's not you, okay? Pretty simple. Ben, Joe, do you have anything to add to the language discussion? Mm. You probably shouldn't say puka either. <laughs> okay, don't say whatever that was. All right, so liability. Um, liability is currently, I mean, everybody, so everybody, when we had to switch over to no longer subcontractors, and I started paying for all the insurance and workers' comp, we had the audit recently. Um, but I mean, it, it's costing the company like seven dollars an hour more per guy for all that stuff, which is which has been painful. It's been painful for you guys too because. Seems like everybody got a pay cut, you know, because they're taking out taxes and all that other stuff. Um, they're not taking that insurance. I'm still covering all that stuff, but it's a ton more on my plate when it comes to liability. Uh, when the guy came through and did the walkthrough, and he noticed somebody was not tied off on the roof, or he, he was looking for extension cord, just like OSHA would do, um, those things are flags that they put in their system to make sure to keep an eye on us. We're in one of the most dangerous industries, so liability is a really big thing. Um, and it's our job to kind of be aware of it. Um, most of us, most of us when it comes to liability, kind of know our limits. Like, I'm not gonna do something stupid. We're not teenagers. Are you a teenager still? <laughs> most of us are teenagers. Um, so like we are, we already know like what we're capable of or what we're okay doing, you know. Um, that being said, half the time, especially if you're in management or especially if you're kind of running the job, you're having to like think about everybody else too. So if somebody is a little bit clumsy, you're not gonna like send them into a bathroom with mirrors bringing like lumber or something you know like that's a that's a liability to you it's a liability to the job um 
Liability basically is planning for worst case. So of course things should go good, you know. And frankly, as humans, we want things to go good. So most of the time what I hear from everybody is, oh, the job's going great. You know, like, oh yeah, we'll be done tomorrow. You know, <laughs> three months later, we're almost done, you know. Um, because everybody wants to think positive. Yeah. Um, Dan's better than I am at not thinking positive. But I mean, he's still learning the trades too. And like, Joe is great at thinking of white boys. They're almost like too good at it. <laughs> <laughs> to the point of like, where everything is just disaster, you know, a little bit. So I mean, it is good to understand that things can go there. I'm not saying they will go there. But it is good to kind of realize that there are things that could happen. Obviously, um, now that we have these new seatbelt laws or new hands-free laws here in Missouri where you, you can't be on your phone. Yeah, I mean, that's something that I've had to like, you be like, real strict with myself because like I'm always on my phone. You know? yeah, always. You're always in the yeah. shoulder. And we have a <laughs> we have a hands-free driving policy in our in our paperwork as far as for company vehicles go. Now it's in Missouri too. But um that being said, like be thinking about things that would be dangerous. Try to protect ourselves as much as possible, okay? Um I'm going to add to the liability substances sort of affect your mind yes. Yes. and we work okay. on heights we work with ropes if found and stuff if you get injured with those substances and stuff we can't help you yep. yeah i know and so i we well i think i've sent the, the tiktoks around like well, we only hire people who do drugs because yeah. as soon as an accident happens, <laughs> you get drug tested. We're not responsible. But your liability but, goes up. But yeah, it still affects us. Because yeah. if you get hurt, yeah. if you get hurt, <laughs> our workers' comp will, will pay for your your medical. We we file a claim. We do all the right paperwork. Um, but like, say you were, you know, injured, couldn't work for several months. If you have, you know, a uh, pot in your system above the legal limit, like to where you're intoxicated, then you will not get any coverage and you won't get any money out of it. How it works is when you go to the hospital to do your work as comp, they immediately call your your company right there and ask if they want to drug test. And yeah. for your insurance, they're going to say yes. Oh, yeah. you drug test right well, there. I mean, my insurance is making me drug yeah. test all, all new employees anyway, and we're supposed to have random testing. Um, to kind of verify. So it's, it's a part, and, and like it does, like if, if your mind is chill after uh, some broccoli at lunch or whatever, then that's, that's you, 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 don't you technically, too much broccoli at lunch. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, technically <laughs> then you're, you're not as sharp because you doubled down, you've relaxed the mental acuity. So I, I mean, there is liabilities involved, guys. Be aware of it. Um, I don't, I'm trying to keep these 15 minutes. I'm pretty sure we've already done our holiday numbers. So last one, lunch breaks. To be clear, I just want to very quickly go over this. We have newer guys in Bridge. The way lunch break is supposed to work is 30 to 45 minutes, okay? If you don't clock out on your lunch break, I do not care as long as it gets taken off of your time at some point during the day. So. For most guys, the way that works is you only clock in when you get to the job site, which is normally 7.30. Here you clock in at 7.15 for the lock stop. Okay, then you take your lunch break, take your lunch, lunch, and then say you have a 30 minute drive home or a 25 minute drive home, okay? 25 minute drive home. Normally, because I pay one way drive time, normally you would clock out when you get home, okay? Because then that covers your drive time. It's like you just stop anywhere. Well, you need to clock out before you're done working for the day if you're going to, you know, to, to cover your break, 
whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So you're going to, uh, you know, if your if your commute's only 15 minutes, then you get done at you know 4:30 is kind of our normal get off time, and, then and you're going to clock out at 4:15. You know that way there's lunch. We don't have time to go in and read the note and then change your time. Yeah. So don't don't uh, mm -hmm. don't expect us to do that. Speaking of clocking out and clocking in, we need to clock in soon. It's almost. It's almost eight. Eight. Yeah, it is. Customers will. Customers will. Anyway, those things to remember. Mm -hmm. um, so just be aware of it. It's one of those things. Like obviously, I love to get to where we can always pay for lunches and drive time both ways and all those things. Right now, we need to make some money. We are. We're like paying our bills barely, you know, um, and it's mostly because jobs have gone really long. We're trying to get past that stage. We're trying to learn from it, um, but we need everybody like on their A game in order to be able to continue to do this or we're going to switch it up to where we're going to become a roofing company or a small company with like less employees and less overhead. Um, just to, to make it work. Right now, we're like going through like 130 to 160 thousand dollars a month in cost, while bringing in 40 to 50 thousand dollars a month. So, like we're kind of losing a lot of money. You know, now it'll eventually get paid back. You know, but like it's hard for us smaller companies to float that kind of stuff. You know. All the time so we're trying to adjust like tomorrow we're gonna to do a big roof uh, which helps you know filter that and we're learning a lot which is good but you said that be was aware. in the city yeah be aware